I bought this Nintendo Switch off eBay for $100. Bad news is, it doesn't turn on. Nothing at all. The good news is, it came with a two Joy-Con. Not too shabby. Let's take a look at this and see what we have to work with today. Not the best condition I've ever seen, but the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at that charging port because if it's damaged at all, there's no point plugging this thing in. Let's get it under the scope and see what we can discover. And there you go. You can see the mangled up pins inside. That means that port has to come off and that means we have to tear it down. There we go. We got our board out. Let's get it under the scope and see what's going on. The worrisome thing about a port mangled that badly is that the crossed pins can send power to the wrong part of the board. So it's important to do a board inspection to see if anything looks amiss. So while the USB-C port looked horrible, nothing on this side of the board stood out. The Q chip looked fine and untouched. In fact, nothing looked touched on this side of the board, which is good because it means someone hasn't yet tried to fix it. M92 looks fine and untouched, as does the rest of the board on this side. But when we flip it over, that right there is a blown P13 chip. And that's not like a figure chip blown, that's as blown as blown can be. Best I can figure, someone jammed the power cord into the port, bent the pins, and sent too much power through this chip. And this is the result. Only thing to do at this point is remove it, but first we have to remove that USB-C port because that caused this. Look at this cap here. Yeah, this cap is shorted, so P13 is definitely gotta be changed. But let's check M92 while we're at it. Nope. That's the cap that's connected to P13, so it's no surprise it's shorted as well. Hopefully that clears up when we replace P13, but besides that one cap, nothing else around M92 is shorted, so that gives me hope that M92 is still good. Let's check that fuse as well while we're here. And it's good. And here you can see the real extent of the damage to the chip when it blew. It really did blow a good chunk out. Removing the USB-C port isn't too difficult to repair with the right tools. I add some leaded solder to the legs to help reduce the melting temperature and make it easier to come off. In this video, I wanted to try a slightly yeah, different yeah. method okay. to the one I normally do. Yeah, should be good I enough. wanted to try heating up the port from underneath, removing the port once the solder melted, and then placing a new port on while the legs and pins were still melted. Unfortunately, despite having my fume extractor on, the fumes still managed to set off my fire alarm, so I had to jump up and turn that off before I woke everyone in the house up. At that point, I just decided to remove it the old-fashioned way by flipping the board over, heating it up and letting the port just drop right out once it was ready. Maybe not quite as... There we go. Once the port comes out, you can come in and remove that old solder with a solder wick and then tend the pads with some new leaded solder. To make it all easier, I also tend the pins of the new USB-C port. And 
say the magic word, the bridge be gone. There we go. Perfect. Then heat up the board from underneath and once the solder is melted, you can drop on the new port. Give it a little wiggle and press it down, then remove the heat and keep the port down. held down until the solder solidifies. Hold, 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 hold. Okay. Let's check these pins here to see if these are connected. Solid, 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 solid. It's all here. Quite solid. And straight. So I like that a lot. Now we need to turn our attention to that P13 chip. Add some flux around the chip, come in with the hot air and remove it. Try to do a better job than I did and pull the chip straight up, otherwise you might just dislodge three, yes, three capacitors in the process. It's no big deal, we can fix that. Low speed really helps. A little bit. Oh, a little hot here, baby. Now we see what that blown chip really did. When it blew, it tore up this pad. I thought it might be salvageable, but after a little prodding, it just came right off. So that means if we hope to connect the new P13 chip properly, we're going to have to run a wire to where this pad was. And that means trace repair. I'm still really green when it comes to trace repair, but I think my process and technique wow. weren't the worst in this wow. case. You have to remember this is really thin wire. It's like 0.1 millimeters thick. It's really hard to work with, even with very fine tip tweezers. I attach the wire to the filter the trace is connected to and route it up to the rip pad. And I apply some solder mask around the wire and place the UV light on it to cure it. Okay, let's cure this. Once cured, the wire is pretty good and stuck in place. I cut off the excess and then attempt to tin the edge of the wire with solder. It's enameled wire, so it needs the outer layer of the wire scraped or burned off before it'll bond to the solder. With the wire tinned and in place and the other pads tinned, we can come in with our new P13 chip and solder it into place.
Once it's in place, I just need to get rid of that solder blob right there. One cap that came loose again. Now, when we check the caps around P13 and M92, they're no longer shorted. And after giving it a good cleanup, everything looks, well, it's pretty lined up, at least enough for me to go ahead and give it a test. All right, now that I have it all put back together, let's test this out and see if we get anything at all. A moment of truth. I'm quite nervous, hopefully it doesn't explode. Oh, we're getting something. Oh! Oh my gosh, that actually turns on. Wow, okay, it needs to charge because it's a completely dead battery, but wow, 15 volts, 1.78 amps, let's see. Okay, it's charging good. Let's see if it charges this way. And wow, oh my goodness. That is awesome. <laughs> All right, let's let it charge for a bit and see how it does when it turns on. Okay, and just like I thought, it's now jumped up to 460 milliamps. Let's see if now it'll turn on. There, okay. This works. Hey, look at this, you know, this thing works. And that to me is amazing. Um, the worst switch I've had to fix yet for sure because I've, I haven't had a chip that blew like that and had a rip pad. Wow. Well, this person has a lot of games. There you go. Again, there's YouTube right there, guys. I mean, what more do you need? What more do you need? It's saying, it's saying subscribe to the channel. You love it. Wow. Okay, and this console did come with these. Joy-Cons and the Joy-Cons do oh they pair wow this is a this is actually a pretty good it's a pretty good repair pretty good find I mean I paid I don't know what I paid I'll put it right here I paid this much but it came with the Joy-Cons which I thought made it well worth that inflated price yeah sure it's fast charging that's great look at that and it charges both sides of the charge port I will still put this in the dock I'll let you know how that goes. Hopefully it doesn't kill itself when I put it in the dock because that P13 chip is iffy. I did try docking this and as you can see here, it didn't register on the TV. To me, that means the P13 chip's just not installed properly. So while we have a working device, it's not fully working because of the dock situation. I did go back in and try to fix up the P13 chip and resolder it, but I ended up making the whole situation worse. So I'm gonna stop here before I make it any more worse. I may go back and try and fix that uh, now two gripped pads around the P13 chip, but for now, this is where we're at. I also might take the board from the switch I was working on that had the LCD screen issue and just put that working board into this chassis. You know, I couldn't get them working independent of each other, but maybe together I can kind of Frankenstein something together and get a working switch out of it. I would have liked to get this fixed, but you know, lots of good practice with rip traces, which is always helpful. But that'll do it for this video. I hope you learned something useful from it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, you might enjoy watching me try to piece together this PlayStation 5. You'll probably enjoy it more than I did. Whatever you do, have a wonderful day.